Super Mobile. Welcome everyone to Manor Lords. I'm Drake Hawkins and we are going to get started on a new game of Manor Lords. We're going to click right into it and uh, get things going here. One thing I wanted to point out, uh, it can it threw me off at first. Uh, this um, coat of arms creator is amazing. Uh, you can select a whole variety of things. This is actually like four different fields. You can change their icons, their color schemes, all sorts of stuff. You can even add backgrounds in each one of the categories. It's amazingly beautiful. Uh, I love it anyways. Um, but... There's another thing, aside from these sliders, another crazy amount of wonderful things you can do with it. Um, one of the things you can do is make your own. And uh, there's a lot of them up, up on the Discord, but uh, I made one that matches our clan. So it's actually black background. And how you make this is uh, you go to your whatever file, you know, your Photoshop or whatever you're using, and you make a square image. I did, I think, 1,100 or 1,200 pixels and put whatever you want in it. But I'd suggest that if your square is like, you know, out here, that about the middle, let's say 70% of the middle is where you end up putting it. Otherwise, your symbol like this thing, if the image, the first one I did was right to the edges. So the wings were way off the edge of the of the shield. Anyways, uh, you just have to put that in the file that it says here. But the file that you make it, you have to rename whatever file you make into it has to be a PNG file, and you have to rename it to custom underscore coat. Didn't catch that at first. Couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. It's literally the name of the file you need. So we got that. Uh, let's pick uh, which dude. Let's go with uh, Mr. Baldy Head here. And uh, fabulous uh, scar and fabulous beard. Uh, light, slight lack of the hair. Uh, Drake Hawkins is his name. Um, and uh, let's go there and continue. Uh, in the game settings, we are going to Restoring the Peace, the basic uh, default playthrough. And uh, I think we'll go with some... We'll improve the difficulty. Improve the difficulty? Make the dif make it a little more difficult. We'll increase the... Oh, no, that's not. That's none. There we go. We'll make the raids more frequent. And we'll bring it down to one year before the first raid hits. And uh, what else? We can also, like, do our start supplies. Reduce them. Make, make things a little harder at the beginning. So we'll still get an armament delivery once we get our first five residents and a storehouse built. We'll get a bit of weapons, but we'll need to supply every little stitch of details for our people. Uh, and uh, the weather can be more intense. Sure, that sounds good. Let's get started. Okay, here. To, wow, we are we we buried ourselves right in the trees, didn't we? Right in the middle of the trees. All right, let's pause immediately and zoom out and see what sort of situation we have here. Interesting. Uh, we got some uh, a deep mine, a rich mine on the left. Some berries, some meat, some clay, uh, some stone. This is interesting. We are like right next door to the trade post. Uh, oh yeah, this is I see. So I'm actually looking at this. Normally, I'd look at it this way. I get it now. Uh, let's see what the agricultural situation is like. Oh my goodness. Oh, that looked very green for a minute there. Hold on. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Emmer grows everywhere. Flax just about everywhere. Barley just about everywhere. Oh, baby. All right, I think we got ourselves a start. Uh, dominance. Dominance is the plan. Take over the world, Drake. Take over the world. We are stuck in this little tuft of trees. All right. This is the King's Road running down here to the uh, trade post here. Uh, our housing in here isn't going to last very long for us. I think, well, since we've got basically everywhere that's accessible, I wonder if we, um, wonder if we start foresting this area out, relocate over primarily over to here. I think that's a good idea. The berries are way off this way. That'll be hard to gather. The wild animals here, the clay doesn't matter, it'll disappear, the stone will disappear, the iron is going to be a permanent deposit. What's the lay of the land? We've got um, kind of a high point up here. Okay, so this, oops, ah, whoa, whoa, map, come back here, come back here, map. We can, we can do a lot right here. We can do a lot. Okay, I think, oh, look at the, the birds, look at this. Look at them. That's beautiful. Ravens over the lands. This, this will be called Ravenhold. There we go. 
That's there was ravens flying over, so that's it got its name. Okay, Raven Hold here. Uh, we can do different tech upgrades, or I guess sort of tech upgrades as development as we go. Um, I will want a, an animal place. I will want the berries. But the first thing we need to do, since we started with no spare supplies, we've got the homeless people's tent here, and we've got our ox, and then we've got two uh, timber. So we're gonna do first is we're gonna focus in on the important things and we're gonna plop a timber manufactory thing right there. Uh, this is, oh my goodness, hold on. That was really close, wasn't it? Uh, that is really close. Um, and then we're gonna put a, uh, this guy down, an animal pen thing. All right, good. We don't get to do any, um, any other stuff. We don't get to do any building of any sort until that happens. So let's get those going right away and we'll just let them build. So. Uh, what happens at the beginning is you are, if you do the no supplies, you start with two timber, which is the construction base construction material. That is literally the least you can start with because you have to have two timber to make a logging camp. We built this because this is a hunting thing that takes uh, very little time to build and uh, is free. There's literally no cost to it. So they're going to go out, haul off and get a bit of meat while I'm thinking and talking. Uh, raiders nearby. Track their movement. All right. Some raiders are going to come in one year. Looks like we're just about done the logging camp. There we go. We're going to put the three remaining families on there. Nobody left to build. Well, we don't have anything to build with. So we're not even going to fuss about that. Uh, this camp is going to drop... Oh, hi. This camp for now is going to allow them to bring the animals in the place down to six. Five. Five, sir. Five is right out. Uh, okay. So logging camp produces timber. The If you want firewood, you have to produce a different thing. Family requests more room in the market for, for stalls. Do they? Okay. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Take this, and we're going to let them... We're going to fix their, their homelessness issue. Right now, there's no approval rating response. Uh, they don't haven't said anything about their, their living experience yet. We need them to gather one timber. Finish clearing out one tree. Long enough for us to switch. There it is, to one timber. Now we can tell them to... Whoa, that was a super zoom. Was that an autosave? I don't know what the heck just happened there. It zoomed me right the heck out. Um, we're going to turn this thing with that little button I pressed into uh, a worker's camp. So it was a homeless tent. Now they're going to come in and they're going to fix it up. Turn them into a little more stable spots. Now, what that does is that means you don't get the homelessness debuff for your approval. That's the only improvement as far as I can tell that it does. Um, requires fuel. We don't have any of that stuff. Uh, but what it does, what it doesn't do, is is give the ability to give people the ability to function as burgage homes. They're not happy with only living in there, but they're less unhappy. Let's say they're just a little less angry with me than otherwise. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this entire section of timber right out here. We're gonna clear cut the crap out of that. We're gonna go right to about here and say this whole area you may remove trees. Boom, done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is put a, as they asked, uh, for a tiny little, I mean, this is the silliest little, um, place ever, but we're going to make a hyper tiny little thing here. It's going to have, uh, a market that goes like this. It has three, oh, that's two stalls. I need a little more space, just barely more space. Go to here, uh, here and here. That's four stalls. Three, give me three, sir. Three. Three stalls. Perfect. <laughs> three little stalls. Nice. And then the next building we're gonna make is the first one that will not that we'll have to actually destroy when we make it. After we make it. So I uh, will go here and let me put um and put a little path. Oh, I didn't do that right. Hold on. That was bad. Don't do that. Don't don't do what I did there. I need this to go over to here. Done. And then uh, we'll need a very, very temporary... No, we're not even going to go that far. We're not even going to go that far. We're just going to give them that little market stall that I gave them. Boop, boop. Something like this. You get three stalls. Two stalls? Two stalls, sir. 
two is fine. There we go. Uh, and then uh, a firewood guy right here. Um, he can go right here, actually. There you go. Lovely. Let's get that built real quick. A message. A message for me. Message for you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, I've heard at your, of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who... That's the wrong word. I've heard of your renown. I only seek... No, terrible. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you'll not judge me by the rumors and slander that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own hand, Hildebrandt von Berenroth. Sure, I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but we're going to write back and say, Your mother was a hamster. Uh, no, you have no rightful claim to Silbitz and Holsten Station to those places you claimed. Rivenhold is the only true land. It's, it's, a, it's a mighty village. There we go. This is our town. Let's have a walk around. And we're done. <laughs> Just kidding. So this is the, uh, you can go in first person view mode, I think it's called. We get to see this is the little hovels they're staying in. There's the ox part spot. Howdy, madam. Uh, this is the woodcutters. Sorry, the forester. Look at it. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous place. Uh, and over here we have the hunter, who actually drags the meat. Look at that guy back there. You see him? He's he's dragging the car corpse in from the back there. Just give mm -hmm. me a hammer and something nice to not There you go. Move. Apparently that guy was skinning one that wasn't there yet, but anyways. And then over here you can see there's actually hides laying on the fence, and there's actually meat carcasses sitting there. That is because if we leave this zone, it's actually it's actually showing what's there. Isn't it amazing? I love it! Alright, and he's processing. That little symbol at the bottom means that they're currently uh, transitionary research. They're currently processing materials. Now, he's gone and set up a food stall. Haha! <laughs> Look at that! Lovely! They have food now. Uh, so each of these uh, families, and this is families, not um, not individuals. There are five families, not five individuals. Uh, each of them function that way, so you assign a family as a whole. This uh, hunting camp has one family that is working. We can click on people. One family that is peddling his wares. Linhart is peddling his wares at the market stall. Uh, we can, we're building a, uh, um, a woodcutter's lodge here, so he'll provide firewood. So once we have a little bit of meat... A little bit of firewood and uh and the logging camp working uh we're at zero builders right now actually i need to take somebody off the logging camp for the moment until these guys cut down all of the animals down to five the reason i set it to five is because we're gonna have a downtime where we move things over to here uh later where we're going to uh refocus the um actually i want you to change your focus uh we're gonna refocus the everybody up north and you know, to reposition ourselves up here. And when we do that, I want to make sure that we have, uh, that we've used up the space for, uh, well. So we've gotten access to, uh, enough of the animals and we can move them into a storage. So we go up here instead of the bigger space. And then this thing needs to finish. So let's bring the speed up. Bottom right is your speed. It's also got your, uh, climate and uh, not climate, your, uh, um, calendar and your weather. Top showing our resources here. There is something to note. There's a toggle here uh, to show the total resources we have or the total surplus resources, things that are not already assigned somewhere. So if we had a bunch of timber that was already assigned to building, it would it would show differently. Uh, on the left shows your families. If you have at least one unassigned, they can do building projects. If you don't, you get a message about it. This shows how many spaces we have for living and our actual population. So now they have... Um, mom dad and a son in each in each household that's just kind of the mechanic uh approval rating if it is 50 or above or maybe it's above 50 it might not work at 50 it might be, need to be above 50 i think it's above 50 but anyways when your approval rating is above between 50 and 75 the next the following month you'll get one new family uh emigrate in if you're above 75, you can get two families emigrated. I'm not sure if it's absolutely all the time, but that's the concept. And then there's public order, not particularly well, uh, thoroughly implemented yet. It is very early access, made by one dude. Thank you, Greg. And it's amazing. Uh, there's plenty still to work on. There's You will find bugs. We'll have, find things that are confusing and don't are hard to explain and don't quite make sense. But 
you'll get through it, I'm sure. Regional wealth, we'll talk about that later. This is our livestock count. The mouse over here, it'll tell you what's actually in your town, as opposed to some of the, like, the stables and stuff that might be a little confusing. Uh, this is your summary of that. This is the summary of the supplies uh, and how long they run out. We have two months of supplies, so two months of food. We got, it says nine months of, of uh, firewood. That's because we don't actually have any firewood which is really confusing the system our name up here with our uh, uh level that we're at and then it shows the things that we can upgrade we'll talk about those when they come and then some pop-ups we got homelessness now we have five people who don't have burgage plots they're not actually homeless as in causing them to be upset and 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 so, so on but they don't have burgage plots and they they should they deserve burgage plots they'll get them uh our road is not currently going to be of any use <clears throat> but uh, one thing to note as well is when you're building, in this uh, gathering tab, all of these buildings have the uh, cognomen in the middle there that says free relocation. So I can just move these slot these spots later on. Uh, charcoal actually doesn't, oddly enough. I guess that's not surprising. <clears throat> Neither does the apiary. So the ones that you can build at the beginning do. Uh, okay, no storage space left. All right, so we're going to uh, take our hunters off here then. Shutting that down. Uh, which means we'll actually lose... Hmm. No, you know what? I'm going to drop it to one hunter instead of zero. We have our woodcutter can get to work now. Good. And then we'll put our woodcutter the same sort of uh, target. We'll tell him to uh, come over this way to cut down his trees. Hi, that's weird. I don't know how that just switched. Let's try that again. I was I was giving you instructions, man. You didn't like my instructions. Uh, we'll go ahead and tell him to cut in here as well. All right, let's uh, buzz along there, and then let's uh, let some time progress <clears throat> as we scan up this way. There is an ore deposit here. This is called a rich deposit. Uh, that's why the crown is over top of it. Rich deposits of ore... Um, of iron deposits and rich clay deposits can later be upgraded in here. If we go down to the bottom industrial tech, we can get deep mines, which allows you to place an upgrade on your ore deposit, causing it to be perpetual. So you never run out. As is, normal deposits are in this sort of range, 140, sometimes up to like 250. But this one's 2,000, which is actually small for a rich deposit. Um, so yeah, that's the only rich one we got, but we do have a lot of nice field uh, quality here. So, so if we're, I think I'm thinking we'll put like our our burgage or manor kind of house up on the hill, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see. Some of these roads are not permanent. Some of them are. This big thick one is the King's Road, so I cannot change that at all. Running out of fuel. That actually pops up the first time in this mode with the no resources. Pops up the first time they actually produce some firewood. So that's the opposite of what it's saying. We actually have some supplied now. Now, we don't have it in the market stall and whatnot. So we'll deal with that when we get there. Two firewood already. We've got uh, 16 meat. We have 10 or 11 timber. So I'm thinking if we're going to have our iron de iron deposit over here, this area will be, you know, uh, our iron ore will be there and then we'll process it real close. So I kind of want some like maybe market square here in this area market uh, storage sort of stuff there over here would be our manor house on the other side of the road maybe our church and manor house up there and a little uh, fault walled in space and whatnot um and then and then maybe our burgage plots can be kind of down here and where then our fields are pretty much everywhere right i mean we can pretty much farm everywhere uh, we don't want to farm where these an wild animals are, but if we encroach on their space, they'll move. If we encroach and or clear the trees around a berry deposit, please note, your people can destroy the berries. Right now, it's a uh, berry deposit as 64 of 64. If we uh, forest heavily or forest at all right in the actual spot where those berries are, so if I click this, no, if I click, what is it? How do I get them? Oh, there you go. If I have a building over ha in hand, I can see those little red icons there. That's a little awkward one to do that with, but... You can see those little red icons. Those are the actual berry bushes. If I don't leave a, a space, a reasonably sized space about this size, around it, our people will cut down or damage those berry trees, and they'll be gone forever. 
So the, no the max number will reduce if you do that. So be careful. With the animals, if you get too close to them with buildings, if I placed a building in this uh, big red spot, I wish there was one of those for this as well, but if I place them in there, what'll happen is uh, the animals will migrate. I don't know if it ever changes their total maximum, but they'll migrate. They'll move somewhere else in the zone. Hopefully just in the zone. There's a lot of timber down here. A whole lot of timber. So I'm thinking we might do some sort of forestry. Um, hmm, if we farm in this area, big farmy space in this area, um, we could have the wild animals hunted here. We could put our hunting camp here. We could put a berry gatherer here. That's a decent range for those. Um, put a main market space kind of here with the storage. Yeah, that would work. So let's go ahead and take this. Uh, if we hit R or, or select the road, we can hold Alt and click on these roads and remove them. We cannot do that over this one. This is the King's Road. Cannot be removed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this one out as well. There's no... You don't get any resources back. There's no resource cost for making them at all. Just not a thing. That other road does not go to... Hi, I'm not zooming out. Uh, okay. There we go. Yeah, that road is does road to connect, uh, connect to the next place. So, Okay. All right. I think we're going to relocate our stuff up here. So where are we going to put our first housing? Um... I'm thinking we'll probably do some fairly straightforward, small-ish burgage plots. Uh, I've been having issues. I'm not sure. Um, like there, with burgage plots, there's the ability here. Like, we'll talk about these. Uh, this uh, you for, place a point. You can attach it to a road if you want to. Place a point. Place a second point. That now determines the front. Notice how the arrow's pointing. That's the front row. Front door of the houses and then you can run these out as long or as short as you want to if you make them small like this you'll see the icon here is just showing two plots right it's sectioned it as two plots and they each have a house we can change the we can reduce the divisions so make it one plot that actually has a house and then it can have an additional house attached that will allow two families to work in that same spot we can re rotate the location it's on and uh, if you actually see on this side, when it rotates like this, it's got this little weird thing back here. This is the backyard, um, the backyard, basically. The, 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 yeah, it's the backyard of the house. And uh, what you can do with those backyards is a variety of things, depending on, well, they can get chicken coops and goat pens and, and apple orchards and so on. But if you're going to make apple orchards or you're going to make uh, vegetable gardens, make them bigger. I don't know how big, I don't know what the primary is, but only for vegetables and orchards, you want these to be big. So otherwise, this whole space is wasted if it's doing anything else. I do think we'll have a, um, probably up here, let's say we go somewhere around here, put our road in for a storehouse. Let's put the market right on the edge of this thing. So storehouse and such would be probably in here. Um, which means I'm going to go ahead and move. Uh, no, I think we'll put, we'll put, hold on. Mm, yeah, let's move the, this thing. Right away, let's move this guy up to here. Now, there's a whole bunch of cut down trees. They'll use those trees uh, going forward, but I'm going to take this and place it over here in this clearing. Boom. And then we're going to go ahead and let them move that. So there's a lot of people available. These guys are still getting stuff, right? They've got this little sto stock thing here. We got a firewood and a food stall. There's very little food available. What we need to do is get our burgage plots set up up here. So we're housing for our people. Um, if we have mine here, industrial in here, um, like storage and commercially stuff in here, and our market, right, on the edge of town, maybe? On the edge of the map here, maybe? I think we'll do that, yeah. Let's let them get over and build this. The ox is running over there to drop off the first chunk of wood. Now, let's watch him. He's That's interesting. What is our ox's name? That's that's an important thing. I should have checked that right at the beginning. That, that's a game changer, you know? Linhart. Okay, Linhart's fine. 
I'm okay with that. As long as you're not like Bob or something. So Linhart, anyways, uh, I just, he's on his way over to do something. He's going to go find a, oh, did he get stuck somewhere? Linhart, there you are. He's going to go find himself the next, um, the next log, wherever he can find it. A felled tree, probably right here. There he goes. Closest one he can find. Then he'll path his way to the road, and then he'll scurry right on down here and have these people build the logging camp. Awesome. We will then get this guy to uh, position and start clearing these trees. Now this logging camp can be moved each time it does. The actual uh, storage, what's being stored in it, we they, they left this pile behind. Let's see. There was some stuff out on the field. There also should be, there it is, a big pile of supplies here. There are 12 stored um, logs there. They can only be moved to, the storage piles like that can only be moved to a storage. So if it's a, a warehouse that can take planks, not logs, but planks or, um, I don't know, leather, it needs to be delivered for, to there. It can't go into the market directly from the pile on the ground. Likewise, the logging camps can't pick up, or have to pick up, uh, the, the ox have to move those piles of supplies to here, not to, uh, uh, not directly to a job site. So you have to have a logging camp that's empty if you see stock, uh, stocks of wood that aren't being moved. Now where, this is an awkward start, actually. I like the map, I like the area, I just don't like the starting position. We do have water along here, that's good. Uh, if we make our market somewhere in here, and we could make a well and a stable. Yeah, we could have our market, like, along the road. And then some storage in here. Kind of like that idea. What sort of space, like, hmm. So, these, uh, there's an option here in decorations. Uh, cosmetics to erase shrubbery if we do this it's not taking out any trees you can see how the trees are still there just kind of clears things up and lets you see what's actually usable territory see there's some actual growing trees in there but that's fine i can remove them i suppose yeah let's do this so we're going to end up with a storehouse uh probably a couple storehouses and probably a couple um A couple granaries, couple storehouses, and definitely a marketplace. So let's go with a, a very simple marketplace. Is probably going to eventually go like you know this sort of size somewhere in here, with you know twenty or whatever storage, fifteen or twenty, twenty-five maybe, thirty. I don't know store spots. But for now, let's make it really tiny. Uh, let's make it tiny and have the road this way. So let's do here. Little road. Boom. I'm trying to be particular, picky about this. And it may seem weird, but I'm trying to be picky about this intentionally. Uh, I want to start on this edge. And I want to go... You will, will you? Okay. Will you do the lifting, lad? Uh, it's acting a little strange. There we go. Like that. Now, I'm thinking it'll go eventually like this sort of thing, right? So that's a little weird, but somewhere in there. Um, instead, let's initially start it really narrow. Four, that's probably too few. About six. We'll need to mm, lift this to the roof. Not far enough. Let's get a little more road on there. Take that back. Got to micro your builds, you know? Let's go like out like this. Oh, there you go. And then uh, make that a little more hearty. Hello, save finished. Uh, like that? Sure. And then back about this far. That's five slots. We went just a touch more. That's seven. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with going this way then. Oh, that's weird shaped. I don't like the layout. Not at all. Um, is that because my I'm like in some strangely skewed map position? Maybe not. That's 12. I don't want anywhere near that many. Um, that's 9. Let's just do a tiny one. 
Let's just do like just enough for everything. Uh, that's weird if it goes three like that, but I guess we could do that. I'm just, it's, it's statically sticking, which is strange. All right, four slots? I don't like that at all. There we go. Sure, four, four storage slots. <laughs> that's ridiculous, you say. I know, I know. We'll sort it out. Um, so, <clears throat> a well. I'll probably have, um, well, the well has to be sort of, it's sort of like, near the people so we'll put that in afterwards i think if that's the market stall we might have some housing right along the market probably a good idea if we had some houses that went like this far that'd be okay but they could probably also go a little smaller yeah and then from there we would have um about this much space for some housing that went this way okay so say somewhere at the bottom of these trees we put in a little path. I'm gonna actually let this go out in a strange sort of way. Let's do let's do a little bit of a that. Perfect. And then I want to bring our ox up here, the hitching post. Can I relocate him nicely, snugged in there? Oh, that's way too big. Way bigger than I wanted. Oh, we can make two of them. Or we could have the well in there as well. Oh, that, that's a nice idea. Let's have the well here. Mm-hmm. And then let's move the hitching post to here. Right beside there. Kind of like that idea. Sure. And then grab a road that goes like this. Sure. Strange little twisty road thing. I like it. Uh, so that connects us from both sides. That connects us from both sides. Cool. Something weird's going on there. And then we're going to have a road that also comes out here. Got to build beautifully. I don't know if this counts as beautifully. But anyways. We're going to have our first basic housing come off this way. And I think we will put a Burgage plot or two or ten. Um, right down. Hmm. It's a little tight. If we had a, a plot that went... That's the market here. Plots down there. Plots over this way. I want to start plot here. Let's go with the road further out. Like that. And then our first Burgage plots are going to be strangely positioned off this way. How about here? We go like uh, all the way up here. I don't know if that's going to leave us enough room there to make them, but... Uh, plot too small. Oh, the space in there is too small. Okay. Uh, instead, let's go... This. That's better. If I do that and I reduce it by one... Nope, no backyard on that, baby. So over here, then. Let's go five slots instead. Go out here to here. Let's try this far. It's kind of a, you know, you got to play with it as you go. Um, that far. No, not reaching. This way. There we go. Right there. There we go. That's what I want right there. Perfect. Just like that. Six beautiful Burgage plots. Now, our uh, our ox have delivered a few wood up here. Uh, the market stall is up here. It says there's 100% fuel coverage, huh? Not likely going to stay that way. So what I want to do is I want to interrupt these guys' stall here. We'll delete that. 
demolish. We're gonna move the hunting camp right across the road towards this spot. Lovely. And then, yes, that works. Stock's damaged in the weather. No. Ah, uh, bugger. What's being damaged in the weather? What's being damaged? Oh, was there food sitting on the ground there? That's unfortunate. Uh, Woodcutter's Lodge can also be moved. He's going to come up north here. Now we got this one up here. I am going to use them like side by side here for the moment. Uh, they're, they're, that'll be plenty good. And we need a construction finish in the hunting camp. We need a berry picker who's going to come in here as well. And gathering across the street from our hunter, I guess. Where's our hunter there? Actually, the berry guy can be up here. Let's do this a little further down. Um, put him right there. And the hunter actually can go a little further down as well. We can move him 15 times if we want to. There you go. All right, move that stuff, move that stuff. Good. This is the only thing going to remain here, and it'll only be temporary. So we're going to take the roads out of here. Wonderful. And then from here, what I want to do is actually run a road out this way to here and that'll let our oxen use that path and people use that path to go fast all right let's speed things up let's get we gave them six million things to do they'll be irritated and uh but they'll get them done so mr uh what's his name linhart here is running the ox oh are you sick or something you're hungry oh that's unfortunate didn't get any message about hunger, but there now we're hunger. Now we got us some hunger. So uh, the well, the well is in place. Good. The hitching post is in place. Excellent. Uh, did the farming stall or the hunter stall get moved? It did. Go ahead and put one hunter on there. It's a limit ten. That's fine by me. And then we're gonna put the forager up to highest priority. So let's get that forager set up. Now this guy's this hunting camp is going to be way far away for its for its garden or its a uh, stall for food, but that's fine. We will sort that out shortly. Stone is where stone's over here, so we'll need a little tiny bit of stone early on to make our uh, first granary. I think we need ten of it, and again without what? abandoned stall. Hmm. Where would stalls abandoned? Oh, the other guy was was placing. It. Yeah, that's fine. Let's uh, demolish the abandoned stall, please. Resources stolen by neighbor nearby bandits. Oh no. That food stall belongs to the hunter. Good. There he is. He's putting his first food in there, and now we have meat available for people. Good. Um we'll get the basic buildings up. Run at a fast speed. That's good. You're hauling in the meats. He should deliver that one first. Yep, excellent. Now the workers. We do have four families available to work right now, so they should get over here. It's a long haul to move. There it is. Look at them. Bra -bra. And up it goes. All right. Let's get uh, one of you on the berry family now. Construction finish in the forager. Now let's go on, on housing. We'll get um, these ones built. Three of them. I, I guess we can just go and take the last one and put it down to like low. That's fine. Don't need to be too uh, micromanagey about that. I like this. We don't have storage yet, which we do need. Logging camp. Do you have anybody working? We don't need anybody. We got 16 timber right now. The ox will deliver stuff. That, look at that. Instant, instant build on that burgage plot. So, with backyards, you can actually add things. Uh, the left four here are basic food producers. They're growing garden, vegetable gardens, chicken coop, goat shed, or orchard. Orchard, you need a research un branch unlocked. But the top three are fairly common, uh, fairly basic. Any backyard can use those. I suggest you use only vegetable gardens and apple orchards on really large backyards. Large backyards. Uh, but that takes regional wealth, which, of course, with this particular start, we started with no regional wealth. You usually do, but uh, new families started moving in. Excellent. So we, what we've got here is one burgage plot and a new family's moved in. That's because the five families that started 
started out in the uh, camp down here, in this, and they're going to stay living in that working camp until uh, until such times as as they've managed to um, uh, get new houses. So we need actually uh, five more Burgage plots, plus the one we just did. Somehow we managed to get a new, new family in. That's really freaking lucky. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. They've got some people. Alright, they also have food available. They have uh, water access. They don't have fuel, but they and they don't have clothing, but they do have uh, water. They need a church access as well. I think we'll probably end up with the church up here somewhere. Probably cross from the market. Once we move this logging camp. I, get the, I guess this logging camp should be focused again, eh? Because I wanted him to, like, clear this stuff right here. That's what I wanted you to focus on, okay? Thank you much. Uh, the... Woodcutters is going to be after the fact. We don't have much of it, but we'll go get it from... We can pick it up from down wherever. All right, there's the logs are ready. Next house in. Big bada boom, done. Three more to go. Stocks damaging weather. Yeah, that was that was bad choice with the weather issues. He's damaging our firewood there. It's too bad. They're going to pick up one firewood at a time. That is very awkward. Uh, they'll keep doing that one at a time until they get the stuff, unless we build a storehouse. So I think we'll do that storehouse thing right away. Let's go with a, a storage logistics. I want a storehouse and a granary. Granary needs a little stone, but I'm going to go with the storehouse, like, probably in here. I'd like to not take a bunch of trees out for it, so... I don't know if we need it yet. Hold on. Let me, let me focus these guys. There's nobody here. We're going to put two families in here we're gonna tell them to focus not everywhere we're gonna focus right in here just cut all the trees right here thank you and go fast in fact we have an extra building family so we can go to three of you there i want that space cut right now the uh one of the big delays is uh linhart has to bring all the uh, the linhart the ox if you recall he has to bring the uh the timber over for the construction there he is. Doodly doodly doo. He's got a long haul for that. But hey, he does good work. We won't complain. Look at Somebody just went and grabbed water. So the villagers actually have to go fetch water. That's awesome. They also have to go, as far as I know, they have to go pick up food. Uh, but either way, I don't know if they actually legit pick... Oh, look at them. Look at them clearing that place. Let's slow down a little. That guy's standing around chatting. They're debarking. There we go. That's turned into a, a log or timber now. Chomp a chomp a chomp. Timber! Oh, 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 oh. Widowmaker. Kill them all! I don't think so. Uh, homelessness and exposed goods. Yeah, it's too bad. I forgot about that. I was like, we, we should gather this stuff early so that we've got an event. No, it didn't work out that way. It did not work out that way at all. I'm going to go ahead and say, look at these Burgage plot plans. Settlement level increased. Oh, there we go. Revenhold. Uh, I want this road to theoretically extend out this way. If I do that, in theory, even though I did that in practice right there, uh, and we put um, we put some more housing along to say here, right? If I backed it up to this guy, these guys' plot, what would that do with a uh, space? Well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Not sure I wanted to do that way, but that... Oh, that's... Hmm. That's a quaint way to work that corner. Sure. Kind of like that. It's kind of cool. Now, that's going to take 14 timber. I don't think I want that, because that's way more houses than we need. But that will work space-wise, so that's good to note. And then on this side of the thing, I think if we had a market stall that was like, instead of these, just this space, if we went out to like, say here and here as our max stall space, get about 12 of them in there, that might be okay. We could even expand it further this way, so maybe we'll leave this space open to the north of here, and then we'll go with our uh, warehouse, say, here. So if we mouse over this way, it will uh, move around here. You can see trees uprooted by for construction. You don't want those. That would be bad. I'm going to plop it right there. There we go. Warehouse, please put in first. Before we do anything else. 
Even before you finish the last burgage plot. Although I think uh, Linhart is already on his way. Linhart, we need you to go get the other... Some timber over there. Ah, oh, he's got some in the, in the area, so he'll go grab the nearby ones. Drop there, drop there, boom. Dang, he's good. All right, then he'll go back to the housing. So, that's good. We got a storehouse here. I like it. Oh, there's our message. Ah, yes. Armament delivery. A strong militia is, a, is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has been, has arrived, and you'll now be able to create your first militia banners to uh, your militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, how, how however, you will need weapons uh, to more weapons to equip all your people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Excellent. All right. Uh, resource added to inventory: twenty spears and twenty uh, shields, large shields. Okay, we're gonna go right immediately into the storehouse, and I'm gonna say, don't put anything in here at all, uh, except for the weapons. And then we're going to kind of, from there, we're going to look at what we might actually want in here. So we will allow firewood. We'll allow the, for now, we'll allow iron ore. Uh, hold on. No, fire, just firewood. We'll allow uh, planks. Actually, no, we won't. There's basically nothing else we want. Just firewood in here. Oh, and leather. Firewood and leather. That's probably plenty. Yep, that's really it. I just want tools, firewood, and leather. Um, the leather is our clothing supply. And uh, so we can go ahead down here and get our first industry, which is the tannery. I'm going to plop the tannery right down below, beside this guy. And this produces hide, which now has no access to the storehouse. So when it produces the hide, it'll just sit there until the tanner himself, who needs it, comes and picks it up. We got uh, 23 berries forged. Nice. We got some meat moved up to the market, it looks like. Yeah, look at that. We got meat and berries in the market already. Yay. Uh, the woodcutter's lodge. Um, hmm. I want these, this warehouse to do these, the market stalls. I want them to have a, far, uh, a clothing market stall, and I want them to have a firewood market stall. There's only uh, free locations is three, huh? Okay. All right, fine. Reason are stolen. More firewood. Darn it. Somebody came and picked up our firewood off the ground. We have 24 timber. I'm going to drop one of our families off there. And put them over on the storehouse. For now, we're going to have, uh, try to work our way towards having two storehouse families and one granary family. Uh, next on my must-do-now list is over here. We're going to build ourselves our first mine. Actually, quarry thing stuff thing. Uh, 140 stone. I guess we can have it... Like, it doesn't have to be way over there, but it could be. Um, let's just plop it right here. That'll do for now. It's a uh, very temporary construction. It's literally... Oh, it's just, it's even freely relocatable. It's, it's only going to be in here until it's... Uh, uh, and then we're going to use it aggressively to get just enough stone to get started. Maybe 30 or so stone, and then we're going to shut it off. And we're just probably going to delete the darn thing. There is our firewood stall, and that is housed by the warehouse worker. Perfect. Now, once this tanner is done, two of the four timber supplied. A bandit camp has been sighted. No. So the ba oh the bandit camp is in Wald Waldbrand. Um, Walbrand has a large, a rich deposit of berries. So does Nuslo. Nuslo? 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 I don't know. Uh, 128 in each of those. Uh, these guys have a, a rich wild animal deposit. Very nice if you have a rich wild animal deposit in a spot that you don't have good, uh, fertility. Like, if we go over here, does this have good fertility? Yeah, it's alright. This one's not good at all. Uh, over here is pretty lame fertility. So this is one of those plots where if you owned this and you had like the rich animal plot deposit, there's an uh, an ability to boost those. Uh, the rich animal deposits. Yeah. But ours isn't rich, our, and we're going to be working on agriculture as our focus. So 
But we're at about 45 minutes. That was a little convoluted of a start. But hey, we're, we've, we're started. We got our first uh, level up. We'll have a look at that in the next episode. And we'll see uh, what we can do with Ravenhold here. And uh, make it into uh, a fine, fine village. Maybe even a town at some point. Thanks everybody for joining me. Please uh, do throw the hits and tips, but remember it is early access, made by one dude, so it's pretty darn epic. But there, it's it's not fully fleshed out. So if it's if if it's, I highly suggest the game, if you're okay with the early access and the what it is, not what people expect it to be. So, um, again, highly recommended. Love the game, super uh, fun little challenge, and uh, there's some depth to it. Lots more, I'm sure, to come. We'll look at the combat when that happens as well. That'll be pretty exciting. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Have yourselves a great rest of the day. See you in game.